We all agree that a supercar is beautiful to drive, but there is another essential quality, and that is style. Without a beautiful style, you won't get very far. And in this video, we'll show you how the design of a dream car with the raging bull on the hood was born. So let's talk about Lamborghini design, which has experienced an extraordinary revolution in the past decade. Not only because in Santagata Bolognese, they were the first to design a super SUV like the Urus, which we're driving today, but also, and above all else, because the brand of the bull has managed to rise in the world of the most desired cars in the world, winning thousands of new customers and millions of fans. Hello, Mikia. Buongiorno. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. To understand how the Lambos of today and tomorrow take shape, we were given access to the Style Center, directed by Michia Bocat, a usually secret place where an international team of 50 modeling designers work every day to transmit emotion through standard Lamborghini styling, a one-off, or even a prototype designed to test public reaction to things like the new supercar concept of the Huracan Sterato. On these monitors, they work on the exterior and the interior design, which includes fittings and choice of materials. They define the mathematics and everything they need before getting to the physical models that they turn into reality. And here we are in the presentation room of the Style Center, where the drawings literally take shape. But what we want to understand is where the inspiration for drawing a Lamborghini comes from. And we'll ask Mitya how he draws a Lamborghini. So, to design a Lamborghini, what do we need? A, a big road <laughs> or <Yeah>. a special <laughs> okay. road or something? You know, for me, uh, you, it needs uh, uh, not so much, you know, it, you, you, for me, you need one line. One line? You need uh, this line. I have a little private story when I, you know, because I always start like this, uh, the profile of a Lamborghini. I did this at home and my son at that time, he was like two years old. He came to my desk and was saying, Papa is a Lamborghini. Okay. And just you know, it just, it just it, and, and it made me think because you know when you look at our cars, um, you know you just need you just need this single center line. Okay. And it was present already on the Countach, and uh, you know it is in the Aventador, it is in the Terza Millennio, it is the line that you need to uh, you know to recognize a Lamborghini. a Lamborghini. So everything is starting with this. Then when you see our cars and you see perfectly also on the Terza Millennio, but on the Huracan also on the Urus, uh, a Lamborghini in, in front view, you need, to have, uh, you need to have the profile shape really with a lot of angle uh, on the side windows um, because this, is, this makes a Lamborghini uh, very recognizable. So I need, I need this single center line, I need uh, this kind of uh, proportion, okay. and then it's almost, uh, it's almost a Lamborghini. Small little lines uh, important. Um, they came also from the Countach. Uh, Marcello Gandini was designing them also on the Uraco, for example, and we have visualized them with the illumination on our Terza Millennio. Are these diagonal lines here? So those ones I need also. And this is more or less what I need to create a Lamborghini. Well said in this way, it sounds simple, but it's obviously not simple. It's sure that a brand like Lamborghini has a very strong DNA, and designing these kind of cars is very inspiring. And Mitya told us that the creative ideas are daily. When he has an idea, he writes it down in his sketchbook, in his personal secret diary, and that inspiration can take place at any time, like for everyone in the shower. Whilst traveling or talking with friends or colleagues, it may be the result of an input from the management asking you to prepare a new model. But it can be an independent idea. It can be developed and proposed by the Styling Center. And it happened like this for the third millennium. 
a concept that looks to the future and starting with children. Now we made, I mean, was also, I mean, uh, you talk about dream. It was one of the dreams uh, when we created the Terzo Millennio. I was uh, sharing the idea with the team. I, I said, I would like to have this uh, UFO, this kind of, yeah. you know, Disco Volante, this kind of dream. I would like to show it around in places okay. around Sant Agata and Bolognese. So to see the effect to see of a the car effect. like this. So, and uh, one of the, let's say, the iconic moments was uh, when we took the, the concept car in Nonantola, that is, uh, is a small town okay. very close. In, in front of a school and okay. uh, we took four year old uh, one, one class of four year olds uh, to okay. show and you know the video was also running in the in the internet quite quite heavily so we, we we took the car in front of the school i took the children and then together we have unveiled the the concept car there okay. and they went crazy they were I like uh, I you know italian uh, you know italian children they were really like uh, Un toro, un toro, a bull, a bull, una Lamborghini. Um, so they were really going crazy and was overwhelming also my expectation because the energy you know, no. that was created in this moment was so amazing. Okay. Uh, so it is one of my, let's say, uh, really hard touching moments, uh, Lamborghini moments or car design moments that I had in my life. is irrepressible, but even an adult hardly remains indifferent to the third millennium and the power of a visionary design that isn't just fed by the future, but also by stylistic elements that have made history. So for example, um, you know, today, today you will see a lot of the Y shape, the Y shape. For example, the Aventador is using this in the in the front lights. Uh, the Huracan is having two of them in their front in the front lights. So everything uh, was born uh, on the Marzal in 1967. So, for example, the door, the side door, was designed with an hexagon. Um, but also, for example, the Miura in the 1966 was using a rear mesh full with hexagons. Okay. So that was, uh, like I said, the, the strong element in the in the 60s. Okay. So they were using this. Then in the 2000s, uh, when uh, the designers created the Gallardo, the Murcielago de Reventon, uh, Lamborghini was using the Y shape. Uh, uh, as a as a night signature, so I don't know if it's visible here, yeah. uh, but on here so you have the Y like exactly. So this is uh, more or less uh, the junction of the hexagon. Yeah, so you have the hexagon, and the junction is the Y shape. So okay. this is Lamborghini, yeah. and when you see the sketch overall, we are using on the Terzo Millennio this as a signature in the future. So as you can see on our. Con del, della y del pezzo di esagono, yes. And this will be from now on, and you will see, you will see it also very soon in, in production. Okay. This will be the, the night signature of Lamborghini as a strong element okay. in the future. Returning to the process of the genesis of design, after that sketching phase in which they collect as many ideas as possible, they're then scanned and digitized. And the best proposals to be presented to the leadership are given the approval to go ahead next to scale modeling. This is uh, the next step. I mean, this I can show you uh, based on the, on the Uros, for example. Yeah? We have prepared here uh, one model. So, you know, the, the size that I personally like very much is a uh, third scale. Okay. In the 80s, in the 70s, maybe it was a, a quarter scale. It was always famous uh, in okay. the car industry, the one to four model. One to but four. that changed in the in the late 90s, early 2000s into third scale because like this, they look a little bit more like a car. Okay. Yeah? So, and uh, on this model here, I can explain very well also the following process. Okay. So once we are happy with uh, such a s uh, shape and we have maybe a 3D printed uh, small model, I, I will say uh, let's have a you know the next step. I want to see it in, thir in third scale. Sometimes, sometimes we are even moving into full size. You know, this so, clay. Yes, this is a clay model. Yes. Okay. So for example, what we have there as a data, we would start to mill. Okay. So here is you know this is representing uh, all the you know the milling moves. Uh, okay. So unfinished. So the next step would be you know. And this is always important. It is always, uh, you know, handwork. It's not. It's not only the idea that you need to have, 
but you need to create this car then by hand. Okay. And by hand means with the talented uh, hands of uh, Gian Petro here. Um, and then it's always about the relation between the design modeler and the designer. Okay. Because, you know, as you see here, it's all brown. You don't see maybe uh, yeah. so much. So, for example, you know, once we are modeling, I will put some tapes on the, on the model, also myself, to see what we are creating. This is the way to communicate uh, between each other. So, for example, um, I need to test the sh sorry, I need to test the shape uh, of the front light. So, with the with the tape, I can try. Uh, I can put him a line. I can I can also here. I can have a definition on the front lights. And uh, you know, the tape is so flexible. If I don't like a radius that I have taped, I can put it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a uh, you know, in the end of the day, design uh, has to be as much as possible flexible okay. during the process. The models are painted and carefully finished with pieces like the wheels, the aerodynamic elements, printed in 3D because they'll be presented to the company board and they'll have to approve or not any changes. And when the green light appears on the overall stylistic design, then confrontation can begin with the engineers as they require other changes to be approved periodically before arriving at the so-called design freeze. Well, it's a long process that takes up to two and a half years of patience and so much teamwork. Let's find out more about tape drawing. That's drawing with ribbons that you've seen on the clay model. One of the favorite techniques for designers to share their perspectives during meetings with colleagues. And here's how it works. For me, and I'm telling you, it's still relevant also today. So first of all, you need to have your sketch. I did this sketch before. So you put your sketch on the wall. Okay. It doesn't matter if we are now in 95 or 2020. This is uh, everybody that wants to do a car design will have to go through this uh, period. So take your sketch. Um, you know, when I was younger, I took always my sketch and made little wooden models in the garage of my father. Um, you know, because you need to understand what you have. La physique, yeah, physique. You need to have this moment from the from the 2D sketching into the three-dimensional mm -hmm. shape, and the first the first step is uh, is this kind of tape drawing. You can you can start to sketch. You can look how low is my 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 front on the car. I can do the fender. Ora stiamo facendo una terzo millennio. And it's also, I don't know, it's, uh, it's depending also on, the, on your mood of the day. Huh? Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> first of all, you can sketch the side view. And again, you don't need to be scared because you can, you know... You can change you everything. Can, you know, if you don't like it, you take it away. So, you do the silhouette. It will, it will take a couple of hours. Now, now I, cannot, I cannot do it uh, immediately for you, but I can, I can show you... I can show you the, the principle how to do. So it's a, it's an easy way to translate your side view or your, your three-quarter view into a three-dimensional shape. And uh, this you can do in, in a smaller scale like I'm doing now. So with a few taped lines, the car begins to take shape. It looks like a game, but Mitya explains to us that taping is very important to train the designers to work without computers. The traits that characterize the styling can then be better evaluated. You can move them in the most physical sense of the term to decide how to improve the balance of the proportions of the car, the dynamics, because it really is just a matter of lines. So Ale, you want to try as well? Io penso di poter fare qualche danno, ma dai. No, you cannot do, you know. <laughs> like I said, it's very flexible. Yeah, sembra un pezzo di scotch molto semplice. Where I have to put the line? You, what, you, what you think you want to do? I mean, uh -huh. you can, I don't know, it's missing maybe the lights or it's missing a line here. Okay. The lights, I think is, but... The lights would be, the lights would be here, for example. Okay. Like this. Then ah. after we take a look uh, at the, at the full-size model. Okay. And then 
also this part, I think. Yeah, you can this add line is missing. This line. It's quite easy there. Yeah, but <laughs> è tutto un gioco di linee. Ma a proposito di linee, Mitia, voglio approfittare, visto che abbiamo qui te e la macchina, se puoi spiegarci qualcosa in più della Terzo Millennio, che è un'auto che abbiamo visto in diversi saloni dell'auto, è un'auto che è una wow car. Quanto c'è di concreto, di reale, di quello che potremmo vedere in una Lamborghini del futuro su un'auto un così? First of all, I can visualize uh, you know, what I told you before uh, on the car. I can switch on the lights so you can okay. see immediately uh, what I told before uh -huh, about the, the night signature of Lamborghini. So, you know, all the, all the front, uh, for example, is designed with an hexagon and then we are using this kind of Y Y-shape, uh, you know, to dress, um, the, you know, the illumination of the car. It's, uh, for me, um, you know, it's containing all the elements of Lamborghini that I explained before. Um, the Gandini line, the single center line, uh, but with a complete new different uh, yeah, interpretation. So the car is much more kept forward. Uh, because you know the, uh, the pilots are sitting quite uh, in front, so that's why we have placed um, the main point, the tension point of that line a bit uh, further forward. And then um, we wanted to question the architecture of a Lamborghini, okay. because when you, for example, compare the Terz Millennio with the Huracan, uh, you can see the big jump in terms of uh, architecture we are doing with this one. So there's a lot of you know, air channels uh, we wanted to emphasize uh, in the design also that we are kind of you know, leading te the technology, technology with aerodynamics and so on. So the car is like a, like a super ala system. There's a lot of um, plan shape. Uh, you know, my favorite view, for example, is the one from here. Uh, when you catch that uh, with the camera, it's quite impressive. There's a lot of uh, plan shape, um, the straight lines here, but also here we are using these kind of uh, Kuntaj lines, the diagonal lines in a, in a different kind of way. Also here we have a kind of a Y shape, Y shape. So, you know, the car is designed uh, with all the passion and with all the love to the Lamborghini design, but in a complete unexpected way, because it's, it's a potential electrical car. Uh, also, I like very much the wheels. The wheels are also uh, yeah, visualizing what is possible today with uh, 3D printing, for example. Okay. Because, you know, when you look in detail, um, we wanted to visualize um, that the electrical motor is sitting within the wheel, so that's why we have, uh, you know, illum illuminated uh, yeah, pieces going around uh, the, the wheel in a, in a very yeah, sophisticated kind of way. And, you know, the wheel is transporting already in the design that it wants to be an electrical engine. So that was, that was the inspiration uh, for the design. And then in the same moment, we are combining this with the Y shape, the Y shape, uh, on the spokes. Keeps on everywhere. Yes. So this is for me, uh, you know, how we dress our cars or for example, um, the body side. So, you know, the people are sitting really close together, uh, like our philosophy, feel like a pilot. So you feel like uh, driving a race car. Um, so, and we are using all this space here. I mean, usually uh, when you compare with Huracan, you know, you have more interior space and the door is here, but look, where we have placed uh, the door or the, the, you know, the, the center volume of the car is so deep inside, so it is allowing us to have a very dramatic kind of airflow and architecture on, ma, on our Terz Millennium. Ma una, diciamo, una configurazione proprio della carrozzeria così estrema è possibile in una Lamborghini di serie? Deve essere proprio la, la top model delle, delle Lambo? Ci state lavorando? Si può dire qualcosa? For me, for me, this car at the moment is like a vision, is okay. like a dream, is like uh, Marcello Gandini's, uh, you know, Strato Zero. This is something maybe we look back in 20 years and then we say, ah, look, they have done this already, you know. Okay. And uh, for me, it is kind of uh, a visualization of what is possible in the next 10 years. Okay. It's also kind of a, a playground for us here in Cento Stile Lamborghini to visualize and, and also to um, yeah, experience a couple of shapes that you might will see in the future on future Lamborghinis. And thanks to the experiments made on the third millennium, Lamborghini has decided on the evolution of their design traits and the looks of their cars from the first official application on those that we've seen on the hybrid cars seen and presented at the Frankfurt. 
preferred motor show, but also ones we'll see very soon on other models. Meanwhile, Meacher has started to draw again, and I don't know if he has time to finish this third millennium. Uh, I would think I will need one or two hours more. Ah, okay. they are, you know, they are, ne they are never really finished, those tape drawings, because you will always come back next day and see something that you want to change. Okay, here's an idea. How about we go back to Rome and take this with us to finish? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah? Let's do it. Okay.